Today we have a uh, an esteemed panel of presenters sharing that with you right now. I'm hoping everyone can see the screen. Um, we've got myself. I'm the manager for product marketing. I'm also a founding member of Fluke Networks. Been around here since uh, 1992 when we actually first started this group and uh, launched some of our first products back then. We've also got Dustin Stump from the Brady Corporation, who is the product manager for the Connected Portable Printers, and Christopher Gautier. That's the French pronunciation. He told me the English pronunciation is, as, is good as well, but I'm not quite sure of that. So I'm going to go with the French pronunciation, even though I don't speak French. He's the uh, global product manager for portable printers, also with the Brady Corporation. Dustin and Christopher will be taking over the second part of the presentation. I'm going to start at the beginning and uh, just give you a quick introduction to Linkware Live before we get on to kind of the main event of this presentation. What I wanted to tell you about, uh, oh, and the agenda, of course. Okay, we're going to talk about Linkware Live. The main event is about choosing the right level label. We've got a Q&A, give you a chance to uh, answer your questions. And then we've got some news that just came out yesterday, some exciting news about Linkware Live. Kind of tack that on at the end. Maybe we'll get you to uh, stay here and watch that because it's uh, it's kind of exciting. So let's start, start talking about Linkware Live first. Linkware Live is a product that we offer. It's a cloud-based solution that allows you to manage your testers, your results, the setups, everything to do with the testing process. So I'll kind of start up here in the upper right corner here. So the project manager can set up all the testers remotely using Linkware Live. So he just logs in, sets up the testers, what are the tests I need to do, what are the label IDs, et cetera, uploads that to the cloud. The technicians out in the field then can download those test setups and the cable IDs into the tester. They do all their testing and then upload all the results back up to the cloud. Now, at any time, the project manager can go in and look at the cloud solution, either from their laptop or a tablet or a phone, and see what the progress of the, of the project is. Also, an asset manager, or in many cases, it's still the project manager, can track the last used location, the software version, and the calibration status of all the testers in the field. So if you've had instances where you can't remember who used the tester last, Linkware Live can tell you. You can go in and look at all that stuff. And then finally, of course, the test results. That's why you're doing all this. The test results can be downloaded to your PC um, to generate test reports, or they can be left up in Linkware Live, and you can actually give the customer access to that their account and let them see their test results there. So you can avoid the entire process of downloading the results if you so wish. Now, what I'm going to show you in just a few minutes is I'm going to show you how to create a project, create some test res or create some test uh, cable IDs and whatnot, and then I'll show you how to download them to the tester. Of course, another thing that you can do with Linkware Live is you can also take all those same identifiers and download them using the Brady app into your Brady labeler. So that means you have one database with all your IDs in it so that all of your labels match your test results and match all of your reports. So it cuts errors, makes things go a little bit more smoothly. And uh, we'll show you that uh, as we move forward a little bit here. I thought I'd also show you one thing we often get asked about, well, is, are a lot of people using Linkware Live? The answer is yes. Over the last uh, five years that we've had it out there, we've had getting close to 50 million test results uploaded into Linkware Live. Uh, this is an interesting graph because you can see it's pretty much, a, I guess you call that an exponential growth rate. You can see here in early 2020, you can actually see the effects of the pandemic when the growth rate slowed down a little bit in the, uh, in the first and second quarter of the year. But now we've noticed that it's resumed and, and people are downloading more results somewhere on the range of a million results are downloaded into Linkware Live every month. So it is a very popular product in terms of our customer base and the people who use it, so that's great. So now what I'm going to show you next, this is where things get a little bit hairy, is I'm crazy enough, I'm just going to give you a very quick demonstration of what it's like to create a project in Linkware Live and then upload it, upload those results to a tester. So here I've got my uh, my uh, Linkware Live set up. I've logged into it. You know, my clever account name called Brady Brady. This is a, actually this is a Brady account that gave me access to it. And what I want to do is if I want to create a new project, it's very simple. Create a new project. Let's give this one a name. 
let's call this uh well just call this gold town okay i don't know what that might mean but uh that's uh that's a good name for it now my typing skills could always be a problem but uh we'll just keep it simple here i'll call it gold town and away we go now once again i can create all sorts of uh setups within the um Within this uh, particular project, I can have copper and fiber. But what I'm going to do just very quickly is we'll set up some uh, fiber tests. That's because I happen to have an OTDR connected here. If you see where I've got my OTDR connected, that's the screen of the tester that I have in the office here with me. And I'm going to set this up generic OM3, just some very basic stuff. It's vertical, so I'm going to use the configuration name vertical. And I'm going to go to the next step. And this next step is where I create my IDs. And so what I'll do is, a great thing about Linkware Live is it remembers things you've used before, and then it also will autofill um, much, uh, much of your ID for you. So I'm just going to make something simple here, B02-09. I don't want to create tens of thousands of IDs and make you sit there and watch that. But that's all I need to do. Now, another thing you can do also is you can import um, your setups, or I'm sorry, your IDs from a you know just basic Excel file, but I'm not going to do that here. You can see here I can import cable IDs, I can export them, and so on. So now here it's created this set of 40 IDs, 00 through 09 here, B01 through B02-09. All right. Now I'm going to switch it to my tester. So this is up in the cloud. This is the project manager. Now I'm the test guy out in the field, right? What I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on this button here that says Sync. And it's going to go to the cloud. And I've already logged in, so I won't make you sit through that step. But I'm going to go through the cloud here. I'm going to see my projects. And there's Goldtown. That's the one I just created. I'll turn off Diamond Bar here. And let's just download those Goldtown setups. I hit Sync. It takes a few seconds to download it. So I'm downloading it over Wi-Fi. I'm connected to my home Wi-Fi network here. Of course, you could also use your phone. And now I just need to go and change my project. So I pick the project, hit Change Project, and there's Goldtown. I click on that. And now you can see there are my cable ID setups right there. If I go back here, now when it's time to start testing, I can start with 00, or you can see I can see the entire list of all of the IDs I just created. So you can see it's very simple to create a test. Um, set up with your labels, the test type, and everything else. Get it downloaded into the tester, and um, and you guys in the field can start testing. And you know they're going to have the labels right. You're going to be running the right tests. You're going to be doing the right project. So that makes it a lot easier. So that's your introduction to Linkware Live. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about how Brady works with Linkware Live. And I, for that, I'm going to need to pass control of the uh, of the uh, presentation here over to uh, Dustin who's going to uh, show us uh, a little bit about the labels themselves you know it's one thing to get the IDs right but you've got to get the labels right so that they you know stay stuck to what they're supposed to stick to right Dustin you got it yes so uh, good morning or good afternoon everyone um, what we want to talk to you about is making sure that you are choosing the right label for your job. And so there's, when you are going through that process, we recommend you think through four main questions. One, very simply, what are you identifying? For most of you, this is going to be Cat5, Cat6 cables, fiber, uh, it's going to be patch panels, it's going to be racks, and equipment. The second question is going to be, is there a certain specification that you need to meet? So maybe you have an internal labeling standard at your company, or if you are a contractor, you're going to be trying to meet uh, maybe the TIA 606C standard, or maybe there's a spec built into your uh, contract that you are doing. Uh, the second question, or the, sorry, the third question is simply, what's the surface? Is it uh, a cable that is curved? Is it a fiber where there's a really small surface? Uh, or is it something that is flat, uh, such as the patch panel rack or equipment? 
And then the fourth and final question is simply, what is it exposed to? So this could be heat, this uh, predominantly within your data center environments, right, from the servers and equipment that's putting off uh, a lot of that heat throughout the facility. So as we walk through uh, selecting the right label for each of those things that you're identifying, we're going to be walking through right those top four questions. Uh, so I think to start here, I'm going to turn it over to Chris. Great. Uh, and he's going to be talking about cables, fiber, and uh, the labels for those. Absolutely. And uh, good morning and uh, good afternoon to everybody out there. Hope everyone's having a nice week. Um, as uh, Mark and Dustin had mentioned, uh, Brady is uh, really a, a company that is an expert in material sciences. So if you do have some of the, let's say, spec requirements and other types of requirements and environmental concerns that uh, you're running into that Dustin had mentioned, Brady does have the material available to meet those requirements. We take pride in the fact of, of how we design our materials, uh, how, we, how, how we position them in the market, and in some ways, uh, I think to our own fault, we position uh, some of these labels in a very technical way um, that uh, takes into account some, some of our, our product knowledges and the way we look at materials. Um, I will be speaking about uh, self lambs and wire flags, which um, are, are, are very, very uh, essential label types for Category 5, Category 6, as well as fiber cables. And uh, I'll start out with self lamps. A self lamp uh, is also known uh, by some as a wire wrap or a wrap around label. And while Brady has solid white uh, labels available that can just wrap around a, a wire or cable, um, it leaves the legend exposed to the environment. And uh, by the legend, I mean the print, the copy, the text that is printed from the labeler. And when, when that's exposed, it leaves it uh, at risk for maybe being scratched off or rubbed off or, or other types of factors. What we recommend is a cell flam. Uh, and it features a white print block at the top of the label and then a clear tail at the bottom of the label that just overwraps the wire uh, or cable and protects that printed legend. And the reason why that's important is, is because that overlamp protects uh, the legend against any kinds of abrasion, solvents, oils, dirt, water, and it is a UL recognized material. Um, we have two different types of materials available in broad terms, in terms of self lamps. One, and, and Brady takes pride in this as well, is we have 30 different die cut options available. That means we have 30 different sizes of labels available um, contrasted against our uh, what you might see in the market as is a continuous uh, tape. There's a lot of continuous uh, tapes out there, uh, continuous labels out there as self lamps. We have them as well, um, which are nice for labeling one or two applications at a time. Um, if you have to just print a couple labels here or there, uh, as a die cut self lamp is a fixed length and width with a radius corner. And what's nice is you can use the M611 or other Brady labelers to print a series of labels in one job and one output, 10 or 20 labels or whatever it is, and print those in the order that you will be making the label applications. So in the sample that you see here, I've serialized some labels and printed those out. Um, and what's nice is you can apply those in the order you printed them. With a continuous tape, uh, it's a little more difficult. I printed these without cutting between, but more than likely what you would do is you would print out uh, labels from a continuous tape, and then those labels would fall or drop, and you'd have to collect them, and they'd be out of order. So what's nice about the, the die cuts and the pre-size options we have available is is that you can print them in the order of your application, saving you time. Uh, it saves you time in, in, in trying to figure out what to apply where and when, and uh, hopefully not losing any labels that you might have printed with that continuous tape. Um, I should point out, and Dustin mentioned TIA 606C, I think we're on version C now, is that we have on the 611, sorry, this is getting a little crowded here, we have nine 
colors of cell lambs available. And that's important because those nine colors match the recommendations of TIA 606C. Uh, those colors are, are available as catalog items uh, in different size configurations um, for the M611 and the BMP61 printers. Uh, again, that is something that differentiates uh, Brady and the type of labels that are available to you uh, to offer to your customers and uh, complete the projects that you're working on. So uh, please keep in mind those color options that are available. I think more and more we're seeing interest in, in the different types of colors that are available to help differentiate the uh, wires based on the type of uh, connection that it is, uh, it is going to. All right, one last self lamp I want to talk about. It's a new product from Brady, and it's called a rotating self lamp. And what it is is it's actually our typical or our traditional self lamp label with a white print block and a clear tail. But what it does is it doesn't adhere to the wire or cable. And, and that's important. And I'm going to try and introduce yet a fourth wire to this conversation. But that's important. <laughs> Because in some situations, you don't want to risk twisting or turning, for example, a fiber cable to try and read the label um, that's connected to it. You want to be able to, to just simply rotate it. So what we have is a rotating self lamp series as well that's available uh, with our labelers um, in, in our cartridge formats. So keep that in mind for those types of applications where perhaps uh, you have limited space, you don't want to try and disconnect any uh, wires or cables and risking any kind of interruptions in service. Uh, the rotating cell flam is a nice option to help uh, protect your existing connections, but also uh, protect your wires and cables. All right, the next thing that I'm going to talk about, and I can take some of the noise away from this, this sheet, and um, uh, is wire flags. Uh, a flag is a pretty a uh, basic type of a label in most applications. I have one pictured here. Uh, it is, in our case, a, um, a, a nylon cloth label that is simply folded over a wire or cable. Now, why would you use a flag instead of a cell flam? A um, couple of reasons. One, wires and cables are in the marketplace, and I'm speaking from an electrical perspective as well, are generally getting smaller and smaller. Um, some of those uh, gauges or wire diameters are very limiting uh, in terms of their diameter to the amount of data you can put on a label. So what the flag offers is an opportunity to have more space to put more information on a label. Um, also, what it offers is an easier time putting a barcode on a label as well. So uh, a flag has a lot of real estate available. You can uh, orient the copy horizontally or portrait. You can fit in a, a 2D barcode or a barcode or any type of barcode that you need to. Um, those options are available. Uh, what's nice is on most of our labelers, we even have a, um, a, a quick key or, or a, a menu option that allows one to even format a flag label right on the device if they are not connected to the Brady label creation software. Uh, a couple different flags that that are available. Uh, one is the nylon cloth. Uh, you just fold it over a wire or cable and move on. I've mentioned die cuts before. We also have some polypropylene uh, labels that either fold as a, a T flag or a P flag on a wire or cable. And what that does is it just uh, allows a neater presentation of the label that um, basically allows a, a legend of copy on a very narrow gauge wire to, to be fastened onto the end of a wire and, and basically present information in a very concise way. Some people might prefer it because it does look like a formal type of, of label flag. Uh, it presents itself a little bit better, generally doesn't expose adhesive like sometimes uh, a typical folded flag label will do. In fact, you can see it on my label here. I got a little edge showing where I just didn't match the front and back of the label well enough um, to, to kind of expose some of that adhesive. That's very common in flag labels. 
the other die cut option does limit some of that and it just presents itself much better. Yeah, and, and considering your fiber cables are so thin, there's not a ton of space to, to grip onto, right? self lamb would yep. be really, really hard. The flag, um, the tail portion of this that's wrapped around the actual, uh, in this example, the wire <laughs> inside of this cable, uh, but on a fiber um, allows it to adhere really, really easily. Um, kind of a unique offering that we have. Absolutely. And all available as catalog items with M611. Yeah. All right. So you think you've got a couple of materials to talk about? Yeah. Well, Chris got the fun ones. Chris talked about, <laughs> uh, right, the Cat 6, Cat 5 that you label all the time, uh, and then the fiber that is almost as frequently. Well, I'm going to be talking to you about our patch panels. All right, so here in front of you, what I have uh, is a 1U 24-port patch panel. And then all of the ports are grouped uh, in ports of six. Uh, what's unique about patch panels, right, they come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. So they might be 1U, 2U, 3U, 4U, right, the really, really big patch panels that you might have. Uh, and they don't always have groupings of six. Uh, the other difference is the top portion, right? The portion above the actual ports typically come with uh, screen printed white blocks that are directly centered over the ports, right? That's for the identification. Um, the simple uh, solution would be, right, a Sharpie marker, which uh, if you're going to be trying to do anything other than a single, maybe one character, is going to be really hard to fit on some of these. Uh, because how tall they are tends to be less than a half of an inch. So you're not going to get a ton of space. Um, the other part is uh, these tend to be kind of that similar smooth surface. So you really have what we consider two main options when trying to identify a patch panel. The first is going to be a white glossy polyester that we have available in three different heights. What's unique about this is that it is permanent adhesive. You mind taking that for me, Chris? Thank you. All right. Uh, again, my visual isn't near as cool as, as Chris's. He had all the different cable types. Um, but really, when would you use this? Well, you're going to use this when you're identifying a patch panel and you expect that there be very few adds, changes, and moves in the future. So you want that patch panel label to stay on there as long as possible. And the advantage, again, of this material, it's got that strong acrylic adhesive. It's resistant to solvents. It adheres to various surfaces. It's going to stay as long as you need it to. So for those that are just going in, you're, you're a contractor, you would label once and then you're out, this might be a good solution for you. The second option, and by the way, these are the three sizes. So uh, 0.24 inches tall, 0.318 inches tall, 0.375 inches tall. So again, three different options that'll make sure it matches that height of the patch panel that you're trying to identify. Now the second option is what we consider repositionable labels. So three more sizes here and from. Hey, here. Dustin. Yes. Hey, Dustin. A question just came up. Yeah. Uh, someone asked, is the one you were just showing, is that the polypropylene, the very, very permanent one? Or did you say it was polyester? I thought I heard poly. That is, that is a polyester. Okay. Is there a polypropylene since somebody was asking? I will look while, while you continue. All right. Chris, okay. to look. Uh, we're not sure off the top of our head. Um, certainly the most common and popular are going to be your polyesters and vinyls. Uh, and speaking of vinyls, that's really what we're talking about with this repositionable uh, option. So the repositional comes in a semi-gloss, so it's not quite as glossy, but it's available in seven different colors. So you could actually color code if you're trying to differentiate certain uh, patch, patch panels versus others. It also comes in three different sizes, what we call heights. Uh, these ones come a little bit smaller than the last. So uh, 
0 0.38, 0 0.375, I think I mentioned earlier. Uh, these come up to a half of an inch as well. What is great about these, if you are going in and you're not just the contractor, but maybe you're going to service that facility, whether it's uh, right horizontal backbone cabling, or if you're in telecom closets, you're in a data center, but you're going to be doing servicing long term, you might expect that there's going to be significant ads, changes, and moves in the future. And so this is a great label that you can apply it and then later, if you want to actually remove the label from the patch panel, it's not going to leave behind the residue from the adhesive, right? Versus our permanent polyester that's going to leave behind some residue. So the repositionable is really nice. You can move it around as those ads changes and moves happen. So I'm going to shift gears now. Actually, I think uh, Chris has an answer to the question. Yeah, absolutely. So um, to answer the question directly, in that configuration, uh, we do not have a, a polypropylene available in that format. But we do have other types of polypropylene that are available. One is the, the PNT flag I mentioned. The other is um, that we do have a non-adhesive backed polypropylene. Uh, those are strips that can fit into, um, that, that we would print on our labelers, just like the adhesive back, but they would fit into some sort of frame or fixture to, um, to basically stay in place and possibly re be removed uh, at a later time. Uh, sometimes uh, there are these like small frames that uh, uh, an insert or a label can fit into. Uh, so we do have polypropylene available in, in that configuration. We also have a material called a, uh, I'm sorry to use this, this uh, as a B number, but a B7425, which has die cut options of polypropylene labels uh, that are available. But I wouldn't recommend those label sizes for the, this application. Yeah. Uh, I would, you know, recommend the polyesters. Uh, the We've got, uh, I think, three different kinds of polyester available as strips, including a metallized polyester, a clear polyester. We even have a polyester available that has a very ultra-aggressive adhesive. Um, so there's a lot of options on the polyester side. Um, it doesn't mean that polypropylene isn't uh, an option. And in fact, what I was going to speak about that I don't know if this is the time or not, is that with uh, the M611, we have the ability to custom manufacture the label types that are needed. So if, for example, there is on a specification or a customer request a type of uh, size or label type that we currently don't list in our catalog, we could custom manufacture it here at our Milwaukee plant. Um, so that is an option available um, for those types of unique requests that come across. So keep that in mind. Um, I also, since we're talking about materials, just want to touch on two other things. One is that uh, our label constructions are solid, are solid uh, material constructions. What does that mean? That means that we're not um, offering laminated or sandwiched constructions. What you get with our label is the plastics that we're talking about, whether it's polyester, polypropylene, vinyl, um, and adhesive and liner. So there's there's no like uh, constructed labels that have some sort of, uh, let's say, paper base with uh, a laminate over it that is printable. Um, our constructions are, are solid constructions. Um, and then I also want to point out that for all of the materials that we sell, uh, we've got technical data sheets available available online at BradyID.com. So if you want to know how our labels perform in certain environments, uh, we present that test data in a two or three page document that explains uh, how a material will perform in certain temperature ranges over time, as well as in certain um, exposures to chemicals and UV lights and other types of, of characteristics related to that material, um, as well as the adhesive. So uh, use that as a resource if you really want to learn, uh, you know, the, the, the depths of, of these materials that are available. And uh, of course, always feel free to challenge us uh, with, with you know, any types of questions or, or concerns or, or needs that you have beyond the information that we're providing. Excellent. 
A uh, couple other questions that are coming through in the chat. Um, I, I have a question about um, what about ComScope high density copper patch panels, 1U48 ports. Again, uh, we have those three different sizes, three different heights of the patch panel labels available in either the repositionable or the permanent. And so it's really more of a question of do you want these to be uh, removable and repositionable in the future if you expect ads changes in moves, or if not, it's the, one of the three permanent sizes. Um, and, you know, a quick tape measure measurement, um, you know, walking up and looking at the patch panel will tell you roughly how, how tall that printable space is uh, above the port, right? I uh, forget sometimes that I have a camera here, right? Just simply measure the height of this and you can align, right, what's the best size label to fit that. Uh, another question we'll talk about a little bit later from the label editing perspective. So we're going to move on from patch panels. So we've talked uh, about cables, right, CAT5, CAT6, fiber. We have spoke about patch panel identification. The last thing that you're going to get to are the racks that those patch panels are inside of or other IT equipment, right? Whether this is servers, switches, routers, storage, distribution, uh, et cetera. And what we have for you, I have, uh, this, is, this is my only colored uh, show and tell portion. Uh, but what we have is a glossy vinyl material uh, that is available in seven different colors. So if you wanted to standardize colors again for racks, versus different color for different equipment, you certainly can do so. We also have those seven different colors available in three different sizes. Sorry, I have two here. The half inch tall, this is a two inch tall, and then we have a one inch tall. That's the one that I don't have here in front of you. So depending on the size of the equipment, you can apply it accordingly. Uh, some of the advantages of our material here is that it handles high surface temperatures. So our testing, right, 30 days at a surface temperature 176 degrees had no visible effect on the actual quality of the label. So think of some of that hot uh, server heat that you have in the data center shouldn't affect this label at all. Uh, and, and that's obviously very important for you. Um, and then again, when to use it, identifying racks, the cabinets, the servers, the switches, the routers, any other equipment that you might have within that uh, facility. Um, I think that's all we have now from selecting and choosing your right label. Did you have anything else to add, Chris, about TIA? Um, well, I did mention TIA 6060 is a, a labeling standard, and it's something that um, we uh, uh, have a, a digital book available. Um, it is on our Brady ID website. If you go into the search bar and, and type DIA 6060, uh, I urge you to, to download it, take a look at it, uh, and you'll see some of the details about different color and different types of, of labeling standards or practices that will benefit uh, um, the ICT market. Yeah, excellent. All right, so we're going to shift gears and talk a little bit about printing the labels now, right? So you've selected. Uh, you, you've gone into your facility, right? What are you identifying? You've acknowledged whether you have a spec to meet. You understand the surfaces that you're trying to identify and what they're exposed to. You've chosen the type of labels you want for each of the things uh, in your data center telecom closet. And now you need to print them. And so what I'm going to be talking about uh, real briefly here is our Brady Printer M611. And what, what's unique about this printer is it's a bit of a hybrid. It is a bench top, if you want it to be, and connect through USB cable to a laptop. So if you want to print, design and print all of your labels in bulk, you can, and then carry those labels out to your facility floor. Or you can actually download our free mobile application onto your phone, here you can see now that uh, that is a real-time demo. This is not a video. <laughs> um, and you can print to the M611 using our mobile application. 
So what does that give you? That means that you can bring the printer phone out in front of the patch panel and actually print right there at the point of application. You can also design the labels at your desktop and email those label files out to some of your peers who might be doing identification with you, right? So it's really, really slick. Um, Mark, if you don't mind, I am on your WebEx with my phone, but I don't have the ability yet to share my screen. Are you able to make me the presenter? Of course. I, I thought I did. Uh, you are the presenter. Oh, or are you... Are you are you are you one of the attendees on your phone? I am uh, one of the attendees. Oh, I see. Okay, I see you there. Okay. Yeah. See, I raised my hand for you. Got it. Thank you very much. That's good. All right. We'll fix that up. Good. So you'll be able to show us what's going on on your phone in a little bit more detail. Yeah. Hopefully. Uh, and you made me present. You are now. There you go. All right. Share content. Bear with me, everyone. Just getting this phone hooked up, and hopefully I don't run out of power. You'll notice on my mobile phone I have 7% battery. Uh -oh. All right, so here we go. From my mobile phone, I am going to tap on our Express Labels mobile application. This is on the bottom left of my screen, uh, that list of apps. And when I open the app, I have the ability to choose what Am I identifying? It's just like we are talking about with your label material. What's the first thing you need to ask yourself? What am I identifying? If I'm identifying a CAT6 cable, for example, tapped a button when I didn't want to, uh, a CAT6 cable, for example, maybe you want to create a cable wrap. I would tap on cable wrap. You also have options there for the cable flag. If you're trying to create a flag for uh, a patch, uh, sorry, for fiber optic cable, or I can select patch panel if I'm identifying the patch panel. This is actually how I created those labels I was showing you earlier. I'm going to open up a cable wrap, and the part I have selected currently is one of those die cuts that Chris spoke about earlier. It's got that white printable space at the top, and then that clear over laminate at the bottom. In our mobile app, it shows the clear over laminate shows as gray. I simply tap in the area where I want to enter text, and I could add data right onto the label. That's one way to do it. I could turn on our wire marker mode so that that text is repeated, and I can set the number of times I want it to repeat, in this example, three different times. Or if I wanted to, I can actually import that data directly from Linkware Live. So on my last screen here, on the top right, uh, sorry, the top menu bar, I have selected the second from the right icon. It looks like a spreadsheet. That's what I tapped. And it's going to ask me, well, where is your spreadsheet located? Maybe I have it saved to my phone. I tap local. Or I might have it in one of the three most common cloud storage providers, Dropbox, Google Drive, OneDrive or you have that data already created in Linkware Live. I'll tap Linkware Live. I have already logged into my account, so it's going to remember my login credentials. And then I select what is the company I work for, Brady Corp. And then I'm searching for the available projects. If you remember earlier, Mark created that Gold Town. It's already available in my app. Select Vertical. Tap on the spreadsheet, and now from my app, I'm able to filter which rows of text do I want. In this example, I'll just pull them all down at the back area. Now I can format my text. I can justify it. And when I'm ready, I can print all of the labels. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm not going to bore you with seeing 40 labels come out of this printer. We will see really easily how I'm able to grab that data directly from Linkware Live and apply it. Now let's say uh, instead I want to create a 
cable wrap, but I want to put a QR code on it. I, I looked earlier and saw a question about, hey, can I put a QR code or a barcode on a label? So let me go in. I will select a, a previously created label, and I'm going to set this up so I can add various objects to it. I tap that plus icon on the top of the menu and I get the option to insert various characters. Well, one of them you'll notice is a barcode. We have, I believe it's 22 different barcode symbologies to choose from, both linear and two-dimensional. I'll select a data matrix barcode. Here I can type in the text. I can serialize. Right. Values of one to five. Um, and then I can actually format how big do I want that barcode to be. And I can just center vertical horizontal justified on my label. And now I have a self lamb with barcode. So again, I, it's flexible. Do I want to put a barcode? Do I want to put text? I can do both. I can serialize the data from Linkware Live into the barcode if I wanted to. The other option is, well, what if I have a Excel spreadsheet already? Let me see if I have one saved on my, here we go. Uh, let me show you that again. I was going pretty quick. I've created, I've selected a self lamb. This could be, I could have grabbed the flag uh, option as well. Uh, and I'm going to again select that spreadsheet icon from the top menu. And then rather than grabbing it from Linkware Live, I have a Excel spreadsheet saved right onto my phone uh, that I emailed myself earlier. So I'm going to tap local and go to the root and there is Excel import .xlsx. I tap that. Again, I can filter the information as I want, and I can tap on the back of the screen to get my formatting options. Here, I'm just going to turn on wire marker mode. And now I've imported data from an Excel spreadsheet. So I know we have a uh, we're running a little bit tight on time, but that is really what we have from a content perspective. Um, again, what we showed you today was the Brady Printer M611, uh, that hybrid benchtop portable printer, print at a benchtop connected to a computer, or design your labels using a mobile app, print them right at that point of application. We talked about selecting your right label for the job. We showed you just some. We have over 600 different labels that you can select from for this printer I'm demonstrating today. And of course, Chris and I uh, can stick on here a little bit longer uh, to address any additional questions. But Mark, I think uh, back to you for now. Uh, thank you very much, Dustin. Uh, you said that uh, we're short on time, not as short as you are on battery. I got to give you credit for being a break. <laughs> Taking on that demo with 7%, you're down to 10%. Uh, that's going to be dead in about five minutes. Anyhow, um, I got a few questions for you about labeling that I thought I'll uh, I'll throw out there for you. One of the questions was: Is that can the labels mentioned be printed from an older BBP thirty three printer? Uh, yes, uh, the BBP thirty. Sorry, if you can hear me better now. Yes, the labels that we discussed can be uh, printed by and large on the BBP33. We might not offer the self-LAM color options um, in some of, of, of the colors that I had shown on the 33. However, those colors are important. We have the same ability to make custom labels on the BBP33 as uh, we have on the M611. Good question. Okay, thanks. Um, there was a question that came in about producing and printing QR codes. I think you demonstrated that, so that was cool. Um, oh, someone asked to put the link in a chat, but I don't know which link we were talking about. Uh, if you asked that question before, 
Um, maybe go ahead and uh, ask that again, because I don't know which link you were referring to. It was about 15 minutes ago. So sorry about that one. Um, can you design labels on the app as well, besides just putting in the info? I mean, I don't know what design would include, but I mean, I guess you can put a QR code along with the text. Can you change the font? And you can certainly change the font size. Yes, yes, absolutely. So you're able to create, <clears throat> excuse me, you're able to create pipe mark, uh, uh, patch panel labels, you're able to create uh, flags. The, the neat thing about the app with the flags is we automatically duplicate the, the text that you put on one side of that flag, so it duplicates, rotates to the other side automatically for you. So you enter the data once, and now when you print the label and and apply it and flag it, you'll be able to see that data from both ends. Cable wraps, uh, or if you want to create your own, uh, you might have seen an option to create a blank label. That would allow you to add images, uh, text, barcodes, a, a variety of different objects right on that label to your need. Um, and you can design those right on your phone, absolutely. Uh, I did see a question of whether the mobile app works with any other printers. Uh, the best experience you're going to have is with that M611 today because you connect to it through Bluetooth, just like you connect your phone to your car or a portable speaker. We do have a uh, different printer I don't have here with me uh, is our BMP61. It uses all of the exact same materials we mentioned, um, but uh, you can print it from the mobile app, but it's not near as seamless of a, a pairing process. You have to use a Wi-Fi direct technology. You can do it, but it's it's not ideal. So really your M611 is your the main printer that you'll be using with the mobile app. Okay. By the way, an another... Uh... Well, a question that came in about that, too, was about uh, can you import label information in Excel? And I think you gave a demonstration of that. So I think we answered that question. But if there's more to that, go ahead and ask. The question about the URL was around um, the TIA 606C document that you referred to. And I remember that now. How, does a, how, how would someone go and find that? So I can uh, possibly text it over to... Um, Dustin put in the chat notes, but if you go to www.bradyd.com and in the search bar, just type TIA 606, um, will come up uh, with a couple different options, and one will uh, be to TIA 606C, the surprising benefits of following the latest labeling standard. So I'll send it over to Dustin. Hopefully we can get it posted before the end of our conversation. Okay. Yeah, and it looked like uh, one person actually already shared that link. But I oh, will, thank you. I will share it out again to all attendees. Uh, there was one other question that came in. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there was a question that asked, so as you are testing your cable, uh, the line you test will be able to be printed, so you can tag it, uh, label it, before moving on to the next test. Yes, you could absolutely do that if that's the order that you would prefer. Um, I think Mark has demonstrated uh, creating that project in link Live. You're with your Versive tester, you're testing the cable, you have your mobile phone, you pull down the data for that cable, you print it, and then you move on to the next. Um, unless, uh, Mark, you had anything else to add to that commentary? Well, I was just going to show very briefly, um, there's a lot of stuff going on on the screen. I'm just going to show very briefly on the tester, it, obviously it will show you which ID you're testing. So it's not maybe, I, I mean, I had this vision of what would be pretty cool is when I, you know, tested this one. So I want to test number six here. When I hit test, the label would come out of the labeler as well at the same time. Unfortunately, it's not quite that sophisticated. So, um, but you could then reach over to the labeler while the test was running and say, okay, I'm going to print out 06. 
it reminds me on the screen, okay, that's the one I'm connected to right now. So I just stick that label right over the wire or on the wire or, or on the patch panel jack or whatever. So I can keep track of that while I'm doing it. So you, you can kind of keep them synchronized, but it's not quite so sophisticated that the tester will trigger the label or to generate the label at that time. Of course, in many instances, you don't just print out the labels one at a time, right? You might be printing out an entire patch panel or something. So, but it does the test between the tester and the labeler, it does make it pretty easy to keep track of what you're testing and what's going on. So I, I hope that that answers that question well. And in fact, while um, while you guys were showing off labels, I actually ran a few tests. Here I imported the results in, and you can look over here and see what some of these results look like. I can even see a graph, look at the OTDR trace. It's not a very interesting one, but hey, it's there and it's kind of cool. Okay, um, I think we've gotten through all the questions and I did promise at the end, we'd show a little bit of something about an announcement, um, that something that's going on. And so let me share my screen here. Let me share something here with you that I think you might, some of you might find interesting. It's a, it's a new announcement about Linkware Live. And what we talked about today was how Linkware Live, you know, lets you put the test settings and IDs into your tester, get the test results back out to the cloud, manage them however you want, get the identifiers into the labeler, and be able to then print out the labels that you need. On Monday, no, I'm sorry, on Tuesday, just yesterday, we announced a partnership with a company called Planet Associates. And Planet Associates makes what they call an IT resource management system. And what it is, is it's kind of like Linkware Live, except for your entire IT infrastructure. It's not just the cables, it's the racks, it's the WAN links, it's the PCs, it's uh, you know what's in your wiring closets, the power supplies, everything in your IT um, infrastructure that's out there. Obviously, it's you know it's it's much much bigger than just the cables. And for years, we've been asked by customers, "Hey, can I put that cable data? Can I add more data to that? In other words, to keep track of all my links and all my wiring closets and all my racks and patch panels and everything else?" It's like you know, we don't really do that, right? We're we're more about just like the, the fiber and copper infrastructure that's here. So we've paired up with this company called Planet that makes this system that allows you to manage really everything in your IT infrastructure, you know, from your servers to your PCs and so on down the line. And what they are now able to do is kind of a two-way thing. They can set the test settings and IDs and send those to Linkware Live. So if you use this Planet software with a CAD system or by itself, you can draw, diagram everything out. It will estimate the lengths of the cables and all that sort of stuff. And then all the test settings and IDs for all those cables will go into Linkware Live, which can then go to your tester or to your labeler. After your testing is done, the test results are then imported back into the Planet software from Linkware Live. And what we like to say is, I'll show you on this next one, is it gives you a what we basically say is a view from your network map, which could be physical infrastructure like this here, all the way down to the wire map. So you can actually pull up the detailed test results out of Linkware Live and look at them in in uh, in this uh, in this Planet application. So what that means, you know, one of the best examples I have for this, if I've got some sort of fiber optic link that I'm running, and I want to know. I wonder, can I upgrade that from 10 gig to say 40 gig? I could actually click on the link, pull up the Linkware Live test report, and in the test report, it will actually tell me which standards it would support. Now, this is the Planet software system is not, you know, it's this is a significant involvement for a company to um, implement this because you've got to load all this information and in all that. Currently, most of their customers are, are large installation or large customers like the U.S. Army, airport authorities, universities, and whatnot. But they do now have a cloud version that's going to make life a lot simpler for people. And even if you're a contractor, I think this is something that looks interesting from the point of view of a, um, a service that you could potentially offer a customer. So that's our big announcement. If you go to flukenetworks.com slash planet IRM, you can get uh, you can see some video demonstrations of how this works, and also we have a webcast coming up, actually just a week from today, where we're going to be talking about this as well. 
So it's kind of a cool announcement. I think uh, I thought the Brady guys would want to uh, would want to know about this as well because it does have an indirect impact on what they can do. And with that, I guess we'll see if there's any last minute questions on any of this. Uh, let's see. I'm not seeing any so far. But on the other hand, it's very hard for me to see what's going on because my screen's full of all of this other stuff. Let's see. What do we got? Let's, let's see what's going on in the chat window. Oh, there's the uh, – thanks for uh, thanks for putting that up there uh, with the link to the 606. Yeah, we'll be following up with an email with the link to that TIA 606 standard document. We'll also follow up, include uh, a listing of all the part – numbers for the materials that we've uh, shared with you all today. Uh, so that will be included in a follow-up email uh, as well. Okay, great. Yep, that looks like it for all the questions. So on behalf, on behalf of Dustin and Chris, I'd like to thank you for all hanging on here and uh, watching this presentation. I thought it was a very educational, especially since I don't know a lot about labels. I learned a lot. So uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for joining us, and we uh, hope to see you on the next event. Oh, great. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.